sure. Um, first, I, I want to start off by, uh, you know, as a football family, we want to send some prayers out to Todd and to Lethia Bozeman. Uh, Coach Bozeman is a great friend of mine. He and his wife lost their son, Blake, a week ago. And I've talked to him quite a bit this week, but uh, the Maryland football family, we want to send our prayers out uh, to them and, and their support uh, with losing a child. And so uh, I'll start there. Um, as far as the game, we talked earlier in the week about enjoying wins. And we're going to enjoy this one. So whatever questions y'all ask me, I ain't going down the negative rabbit hole with y'all. We're 5-0, 4-0 at home, 2-0 in the Big Ten, and I couldn't be prouder of this team. Um, you know, this is a really close-knit group that just plays. Um, same time, we know it's still just the beginning. We still got some work to do. We got a tremendous challenge uh, coming up this past this upcoming week, uh, which I know that our guys are, are excited for. I thought today was probably the most complete game that we played in all three phases. Started fast, finished strong, playing to our standard. And usually if you play to your standard, you usually end up with the wins. And today we were uh, fortunate to be able to do that. Um, we got the running game going in the second half. So that you don't have to ask me about Roman Hemby. We got the running game going. And run, Roman made some plays, Twan made some plays. Uh, still got some things to clean up there. But you know, I thought when we needed to, um, we were able to run the ball there uh, to, 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 to use up some clock. Um, We'll get the stuff cleaned up. We got a, a special opportunity on the road next week, um, and have a chance to, you know, uh, finish this thing the right way. So that I open up the questions. Mike, the start uh, that uh, Ty Felton got off to this evening, the sink that he was in with uh, Talia in the first half, he could address. Was there something in particular that you guys saw that he could take advantage of? No, you know, it was just the way we call the game. Obviously, we try to get our playmakers involved. And, you know, the irony of a guy like Ty is, you know, I think as coaches, we, we think more highly of Ty than sometimes I think he does of himself. And he's a talented player. And, you know, our receiving core as a whole is a group that I think has the ability, any one of those guys, from Ty to Tyrese to, to Jay Sean to Caden Prather, all those guys are talented enough to have that type of game. Um, and, and I'm glad that Ty was able to do it because I think this may be one just for the confidence he needs to play with. He's a really talented player, great speed, has the ability to make plays. And you know, I'm hoping today to kind of jump starts him to where that becomes the standard for him and how he can play for us. Hey, Mike, we mentioned in your opening remarks about another fast start. And what have you been able to kind of unlock those over the last couple of games? I mean, I, I, the way we practice, some of the things, you know, as I said a couple of weeks ago, we got back to some of the good on good stuff. We actually added a period uh, at the start of practice where we had the one O go against the one D. It was up tempo. So, you know, this is the generation, man. They get bored with the details and basics. And so just by flipping kind of how we started practice this week on Tuesday, which Tuesday is usually a really tough practice for our guys. Uh, we threw the ones and the ones out there to start it out the stretch. A really competitive period kind of got us going. You know, when they play against each other, they're good on good. Uh, they get out of that mentality that you have when you work against the development team, developmental team. And so I think a little bit of those things play a part, but I also think that it's the maturity that this team has to take the coaching and go out and execute. Coach, can you talk about building up this defense to the point that you have 30 to 35 guys that are playing in a game and holding the opponents to? pretty much in the, in the real game, to three points. Yeah, we play a lot of players. And I know, um, you know, statistically that maybe hurts some guys. You know, you look and see that guys aren't having the, the gaudy stats that allow them to maybe have the individual accolades. And but football is the ultimate team sport. And, and I think it shows, you know, when I talk about that brotherhood that we've created with this team, there's not a guy there when we're seven guys in and out, they're, they're excited for each other. They're happy when other guys are out there making plays. Uh, it helps us because, as we know, this is a really physical sport. And, you know, during the course of the season, guys don't make it through. And we've got to have guys that have game reps that have the ability to be the uh, next man up and come in and execute. And we've been able to do that, whether it's anywhere in that front seven and even on the back end. So, uh, Coach, uh, we talked about the, the importance of the confidence for uh, the wide receiver, but for the entire team, a, a dominating game like this, how important is that going into this tough stretch? Yeah, it's, it's a momentum game. Going into it, you know what, not one person 
this week saying a word about who we play this week. Now, that, Ohio State didn't come up one time this week. And to me, that shows the maturity, I think, of this team because as we always try to say, they're faceless and nameless. Uh, this was a, a, a great opportunity to cre create some momentum and have confidence going into a tough place to play against a really talented team. Um, but you know what? I, I think this team is just young and dumb enough to show up and play like they're capable of playing and we'll see what happens. Coach, uh, right here. Uh, Toledo County for six touchdowns today. Would you think it would be a fair assessment to say this is about as good as you've seen him in a Maryland uniform today? And how does it kind of feel to have him command the offense like that? I, I wouldn't go there yet. I, mean, I think this I mean, he's a talented player. He played really well today. Uh, played mistake-free football for the most part. Um, and how he goes, we go. And when he's in rhythm, today he, we got him going in rhythm early starting with the big play down the sideline of Jay Sean. He's, he's that type of guy, man. And, you know, some guys are shooters, some guys are scorers, and he got that scoring mentality that when we play in rhythm and the calls are coming in and our guys are getting lined up, um, the, the scheme allows quarterbacks to, to, to find really talented players. And you know, a bunch of guys showed up, made plays for us. And I know Leah gets a ton of the credit, but I'm sure he'll tell you that some of those, those receivers and tight ends and the O-line did a really good job as well. Hey, Mike. George. Congratulations on the win. You, Thanks. You talked a lot this week about playing to the standard. Is this what you would like this to look like? And is this something you want to sustain like this for the rest of the season? Standard is the standard. And when they put it on, we know that we're capable of doing this. When we play tough games, very few times will it be because of our opponent. It'll be all about what we do or don't do. And, you know, as I've said before, I really like this team, man. They are fun to coach. But they, they pull for each other. They've got a tremendous brotherhood uh, that's been created where they don't want to let each other down. It ain't even about letting us down as coaches. It's about that brotherhood. And, and I've seen it starting in January. You know what? I don't know where, where it's going to take us, but I do know that for today, we're 5 0. Uh, these kids believe in what we're doing. They're all bought in. And you know what? Uh, got to give them credit. And one of those guys you've talked about before, Dylan, who you said as a leader, even as a freshman in this room, you could see how his teammates kind of rallied around, how excited they were for him after, after that touchdown. What, what has he meant to, to this program and how has he been able to capture that leadership role even as a freshman? Well, he's more of a funny guy than he is a leader. And so everybody was happy to see him score because he's gonna say or do something crazy. Um, but you no, know, as a young guy, he is a guy that um, really competitive uh, personality, uh, not afraid to be a leader as a young player. Sometimes maybe talks a little too much, but. That's the, the fun part about seeing these guys grow up and grow up quick. And you know, with Corey going out in the second half, it opened up an opportunity. I've been saying that tight end room was a lot like the running back room was a year ago, where you know people say we lost a guy that you know maybe played some plays for us. But I see number 17 Rico Walker out there making plays and playing a lot of reps. I see 85 leaping and hurling over people, and now you see 18. And so that's a Coach Summers got a talented room there. AJ Stefanski's played in short yardage situations for us. But we just got to keep bringing those young guys along. We'll need them. Next year, right? Uh, hey, Coach, like you mentioned, the first five of those starts to the two outside one. With that perspective, most of us weren't even born up, you know, by that time. But just having this five no start, what does that do with the team internally, the program, and then just kind of a national outlook perspective on Maryland? I mean, I don't know about the national perspective, but I know for us in that building, the Jones Hill House, uh, I don't think there's anybody in here that's surprised. I said this to my team uh, a week ago or during the week that how many of y'all didn't expect to be at this position, at the position we're in? And not many people raised their hand. Not anybody raised their hand. So our expectation is the one that counts and matters most. And I can tell you that, as I said, man, this team is fun to coach. Um, they show up. Um, they don't care who the opponent is. We had probably one of our best weeks of practice going into this game. And, I'm hoping to build on that this week, enjoy the win tonight, uh, get about 24 hours to celebrate it and get in here tomorrow as a staff and, and start the game planning and, and, and things for the, the opportunity we have coming up next Saturday. Hey coach, um, you mentioned with Ty Felton that um, you know, sometimes you believe in him more than he believes in himself. Has it been a challenge to try to get that confidence out of them? And what do you hope a day like today does to kind of propel them forward? No, it's not a challenge, man. It's just sometimes some guys are alpha males and some guys kind of ease their way into situations. Ty is one of those guys that doesn't say a lot, but he blocks, he runs, routes, he's 
explosive as a receiver. So, you know, when I say that, don't get it wrong, I don't think he thinks he's, he sucks. I mean, I think just for me, I know he's capable because I see him do it all the time. And, you know, he's had, he's had some opportunity in games with some 50 50 balls that he had to come up with. So, you know, we're, we're one of those teams, we got guys wide open and we fall down for no reason. And, you know, but today he made those plays, and I think and hope that it's able to jumpstart the confidence that he needs. That you know, I, I like those receivers that beg for the ball. You know, and, and you know, he's one of those guys that really he won't say anything. If he doesn't get a catch, he'll do his job. But I'm glad to see him make those plays, and hopefully it uh, ignites him to play that play like an alpha male. Um, yeah, here. Um, I guess you guys had a lot of drives that were. Oh, I'm good. How are you? All right. Um. Uh, efficient today, like, you know, not a lot of time and like touchdowns with, you know, taking Ben to that good field position. How are you, like, able to you know, kind of both those things? How were we able to do that? I mean, yeah. the, I, the players went out and executed. I do think a couple of series we, we you know, one that jumps out is right before the half. I would have loved an opportunity to send Jack out to kick it. We had a play call where we wanted to catch it, steal as many yards, get out of bounds, and we missed that at the end. But, um, Players executed, our defense put us in great position uh, on the offensive side of the ball. I mean, we had a time of possession that was like, we didn't have the ball very much, but we had short fields. Uh, we created explosive plays. I don't know how many we got today, but our goal is to try to create at least 12 explosives. And I thought we uh, did a really good job of, of, of creating those type of plays. Uh, hey, lots over here. Yeah. Um, you know, you, you touched on um, being 5-0 and, and, and having this moment and, and from, Thinking back to where this burden was when you came back here and where it is now and for the first time since you were running the running game here. And I, I mean, for you personally, what, what kind of, I know this is the ultimate goal, but what does this mean to you individually today to have, have this moment with your team in beat five? I think the biggest thing is that it validates me. I got a boss that took a chance and hired me, gave me a chance. I've been a failed head coach and, and Damon hired me and gave me this opportunity and all he's done is and him and Colleen done give me the resources that I need to be able to put a team together like this one. Are we there yet? No, but the, the validation for me is the fact that we as a, a program working with Damon, Colleen, and my team, the support staff, uh, we all have worked together to, to get this program to where it is today. And you know what? You know, there's a lot of people that didn't think we could do that to do this. Where we are, are we there yet? No. I mean, we got work to do, and, but I'm not going to get negative. We're 5-0, and oh, we're going to keep this thing going. And, we're gonna keep uh, keep plugging away, man. That's what I meant. Thank you, man. Thank you, right here. Yep, I got oh, you. Hey, you can move, man. <laughs> so, no, no, no permanent seat for me. Right. But uh, you kind of touched on it. But just kind of going through, you know, just through the first five weeks. Obviously, you know, game is fresh and whatnot. When you look at kind of big picture, I guess, what do you maybe kind of leaves you most confident kind of going into uh, week six against Ohio State? Uh, I think the momentum that we were able to create. You know, there's a guarantee that we're gonna come out and play this way next week. No, but if we put together a good week of practice like we had this past week, you know, I had a lot of people texting me. I mean, even Coach Friesen texted me right before the game. He was like, hey, man, don't, I can hear his voice like, hey, this is the one of those games. You got to make sure they're ready to play. And I text Coach. I said, man, if they're ready, Coach. And uh, it, it put us in a position to have an opportunity. We created momentum. And that's, to me, what it's all about. Um, but we still got to put some work in this week. We've got a tremendous challenge. We're excited about the challenge. As I said before, Opponents got to be faceless and nameless. We won't prepare any differently for Ohio State than we did this week. And that's what this standard's all about. And, you know, we keep trying to plug away and you know, let the players make plays. And the coaches got to do a good job of putting them in position to do it. And who knows, man, we'll go up to Columbus and see how that plays out. Thank you, Coach. Thanks, guys.